All right, moving on to John Wick 2, the sequel that surpassed the original, in my opinion, in pretty much every way. And that's not a knock on the first one because the first one's amazing. This one just, it upped it, and it just took every single thing about the first one, and it just made it a little better. And that's what sequels should ultimately try to do. Now, if you want to hear a lot of my thoughts of the John Wick franchise, just the fighting and all that stuff, I would recommend going and checking out uh, the John Wick 1 uh, review. I'm not going to reiterate. I'm sure I will, you know, ac uh, accidentally bring up the same points a, f a few times, but I'm going to not try to go over the exact same things I just talked about a minute ago. Um, but all right, so let's just jump right into this. So we got the neon streets here. You know how much I love neon. I'm going to freaking point it out every time we got it. We even got neon in the damn cover of the film. But there's the black and white film up on the wall, and it's like this motorcycle chase crash thing, and then a motorcycle slides into view, and then this guy jumps up on the bike and he takes off again, and then you got John Wick's new car coming after him, and uh, and then you got the mirrored exposition of this new villainous character because John is coming for his car, he wants his car back, and the opening chase and fights and uh, is, is badass. He encounters this big, huge, freaking uh, massive guy. And instead of going and fighting him, you know, he pulls the Indiana Jones trick where he just pulls his gun and just blows his kneecaps out. Like, I am not dealing with your ass. Like, I, I can't take in a fair fight. I, I know that and I ain't having it. So let's, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna put you down to my level. I got a gun, good luck with that one. Um, goes and he grabs his dog and our dog his car and smashes it all to hell which for any car nut I'm sure that this was painful to watch this is probably more painful to watch than the dog being killed in the first one for some car enthusiasts who just can't get enough of that uh, 69 Mustang right that's what he says it is I'm not a car guy but uh, so I know some people are hardcore guy uh, um, car guys John Leguizamo returns. We've got a lot of returning people here. It, the, I love the attention to detail when it comes to making this feel like um, a bigger version of the first one. It's just everything's back here. The Continental, the Concierge, you know, the manager, all of these characters come back and more. We get the reunion of Neo and Morpheus here, which of course is always good to see. So we got a new Keanu Reeves trilogy that also has Lawrence Fishburne in it, or as I know him from King of New York days, Larry Fishburne. Um, and <clears throat> he still has his dog. Uh, he still hasn't named the dog, which I think even after seeing three now, I don't think his dog has a name. So he rode to the desert with a dog with no name. The next one actually has a desert in it. So that song would be apt, although he does not bring his dog to that desert. You don't bring a dog out into the desert like that. Uh, you don't bring anybody out there. Um, and so we find out that he made a blood oath with some dude here in the beginning and he wants that debt repaid. And John is like, nope. Which I feel like John should know better. But at the same time, when he does betray John, which I think is really stupid of him to do, of course. Like what, John's gonna what? Tell John Wick is gonna tell. Come on now. Um, but when he goes there, I, I guess it makes sense that that John is like, I don't want anything to do with you. I know you're just gonna try to betray me when I don't um, honor this. When I don't, or even if I honor this blood oath, you're gonna fucking try to kill me. And if I don't, you're gonna try to kill me. Like either way, and I don't want to do what you have to ask here. So he burns his house down. And he's like. Here's your task. I need you to kill my sister. I want to sit on her high table seat. And so he, now this is something I find interesting about this and kind of a flaw in the movie, if there's any, is he says that killing his sister is impossible. It cannot be done. And the only thing that guy gives him is a location and he pulls it off like nothing. So that part to me was a little odd. He goes there, he, you know, we have this whole montage of him getting a new suit. 
um, uh, all these new weapons. Um, he stacks everything. And the real fight that he encounters, like, yes, he encounters a couple of her guards when he's running away from this, uh, you know, this, when he's, when he's in this huge concert that they're having out there. Um, he encounters some, and yes, those guys, those guys don't seem any more badass, except for Common's character, than any other people that he's encountered. He only encounters maybe five or ten of them at best. And then when he gets down into the like catacombs, the, the tunnels under the city, that's when he encounters the, the main bad guys here's uh, you know, army, essentially. And that is when it becomes near impossible. Um, and so, I don't know, just... I, I, he could be mistaken and she just didn't have enough guards around or whatnot. But the fact that he says that she's going to be impossible to kill and she's, she even kills herself, he doesn't even have to do it. But he does put a bullet through her head just to make sure, I guess, so that it's honored and, and he had a part in it. It could make it look like he did it. I don't know. He shoots her anyways, which is a really sad scene and also kind of a cool scene because she's like, you know, I lived my life the way I wanted to. I'm going to die the way I wanted to. Um, and kind of funny, there's a lot of controversy going on right now of different things. And I addressed the Robert Pattinson Batman one recent, uh, in the last video. Um, and in this one, there's a lot of hate towards the new Batwoman trailer for the CW, which I don't understand at all. Because if you are an Arrowverse fan like I am and have watched the other four shows, it looks exactly the same as the other four shows so i don't really understand what the huge issue is but the only other show that got this much hate upon its release is supergirl so there's a common theme going on here of what gets hate and what doesn't i think you can guess what that is um i thought the trailer looked cool i thought it looked just like any other fucking cw show or even outside the Arrowverse, like black lightning or something but anyways we got ruby rose in here and I think she's cool. I, I, I like the look of her in this. I like, uh, you know, her fight sequence in the end. Um, a lot of cool new characters. As I said, Lawrence Fishburne, her, um, and Common. Oh, Common was great in this as well. Um, and so he, I like that the sheriff is even brought back from the first one. Um, and... <clears throat> Let's see, what else? I should have went through my notes before I did this. <laughs> um, as I said, him trying to kill John was such a dumb ass move. Um, and I like that, I like that this is a repercussion from him coming out of retirement to kill this kid after this dog is killed because you know this dude says to him like i wouldn't have bothered you if you would have stayed retired i would have honored that and i would have went somewhere else but because you came out of hiding because you came out into the world again you can't just come back in when you please like you either retired or you didn't and since you're out i came to you and i like that that's addressed i like that he has repercussions for what he did like coming out this dog at this death and his his vengeance for that dog has cost him everything he was just you know but he filmed he seemed suicidal in the first one he like went to the car track and he was racing around and somebody says in, and i think it's in this one or yeah i think it's in this one that he's addicted to the vengeance that he's addicted to this stuff and he was going to come back to it regardless and i think that that feels true because of the fact that he has to go to the rate uh, whatever that open parking lot area is and he has to race around and you know um get his adrenaline going like i think he's an adrenaline junkie he needs that constant stimulation and uh, i feel like that um goes through here i like that when he goes to italy the dude who's there to meet him says are you here to kill the pope <laughs> <laughs> like, of all the people that they're going to send to kill the Pope, it would be John Wick. So I like that that has to be the question. Uh, he's got a bulletproof suit here, which I thought was, was pretty cool. Um, I don't know how ridiculous that is. Probably pretty ridiculous. Feels like some Bond shit. You just kind of have to go, okay, you know, it's in the movie. I'll say it works. Um, do, you fear damn Do you fear damnation? I like that question, and I like 
John Wick's answer here, which is a strong yes. I sure as hell do. I'm not sure what I believe in, but if there is anything, I'm fucked. Um, And I love that something I didn't address in the first one, and I'm glad that I got to save for this one because I addressed so much in the first one that I wanted to talk about here, but what is what it is. Fight sequences within crowds of people. This is very difficult. A, within, like, you gotta gotta understand that, like, Keanu Reeves or, or, no, okay, sorry. John Wick's character doesn't want to hurt any innocent people. Of course, he's putting them at major risk because even if he's a surgeon with his gun, A, you don't know what's gonna go through someone's body and isn't going to go through their body. So a shot could go through someone's head and through a person behind them. Um, of course, none of this happens in here. He seems to not kill any innocent people in this that we are aware of. Um, but also the people that you're fighting, of course, you want to be missing all the bullets that are being fired at you. And where do you think those are going to lodge themselves? They sure as shit, you know, going to hit some people at some point. So when you go to these nightclubs and when you go to these places and you get into these big gunfights, even if you try your damnedest, a lot of innocent people are going to get killed. But that all being said, from a more technical standpoint, from behind the camera, um, just being able to f- film an action sequence in fr- like around, like they're fighting in between crowds of dancers and concert goers and whatnot, party people, and they're all just random bystanders that they're having to weave and dodge and weave through and those people have to stay on set and they have to fucking go through these fights and they have to set up a hundred different camera angles and it's all got to feel um like it meshes together and it has continuity and flow to it holy shit i can't even imagine how much work that takes to pull off and to make it feel as seamless as it does the fight sequences in this within the crowds is impressive to say the least it really is unfucking real and my god my hats off to these guys for being able to pull off these huge stunts with so many people around them my god they really really do put so much work into this more work than most people would ever um, understand the style of the film too is just so cool this this movie just has such style to it um, not just the attire, but the set designs, the, you know, the everything. I mean, everything in this film has style to it. it. It feels like a John Wick movie. Like, this doesn't feel like anything else to me. Like, I could be watching this, and it's just like, this feels John Wick. This feels like there's, there is a consistency to the atmosphere that they've created in this. And then... It's it's great stuff. Um, and I kind of already talked about all of that, all of that uh, in my last video or in this video. Um, he goes in and um, he kills the guy. He's, he comes on a continental ground after everything. I do like that he sticks the freaking... Um, he sticks the knife in Common's freaking aota, and he's like, "I'm gonna." <laughs> he's like, "The knife is in your aota. Like, you can pull it out and and die, or you can leave it in and live." And he's, "I'll be seeing you." Um, that's a great sequence. Of course, it immediately reminds me of Girl Interrupted. Like, come any closer, and I'll stick this in my aota. Your aota is in your chest. Good to know. That was like a big line back in the day. If you're my around my age, you'll remember that being like a big deal. I had a lot of girls that I knew back in the day. Just thought, like they quoted that line all the time. Anybody ever remember that? Anyway. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, every hitman in the fucking land is after him now. And we do get to see a pencil kill, two pencil kills. He's, the, the story of his, of his fame comes with the three-person pencil kill. And he kills two more people with pencils. So chalk that up to five people with a pencil now. You got the sumo wrestler. You've got the the violin player. I love the sumo wrestler fight because he has to like put a one in his head and then he turns around. And the guy still gets, he puts it like at the top of his head and pops him down through and the guy falls over and then he still tries to get up and he pops him so fast. Oh, it's so good. Um, also that fight between Common and him before when they're walking through um, the the subway like terminal and 
they're like just pot shotting at each other like they have a gun under their arm and they're just like with silencers walking and he's like upstairs and john's downstairs and they're just firing at each other and no one notices that they're shooting at each other fucking like that's subtle comedy and it's brilliant it works so well i was laughing my ass off at that so damn good um and yeah we haven't really talked about morpheus's character here so he um he runs the underground homeless circuit which is crazy it's cool you know they're like no matter where you go they, you, you got the homeless the homeless holy shit man those guys are everywhere there's a whole you know a whole freaking circuit of them and they can they they all work together Ah, that's that's a cool addition to this that you don't really see much. <sighs> and uh, yeah, he sends him out there with seven bullets, which plays into the next movie. And uh, oh, the the one-handed chamber check when when John throws up the gun and he checks the chamber with one hand and then he pops it back down. That move is so cool. Why it's necessary? Who gives a shit. It looks badass and just shows more of how much Keanu Reeves embraces these movies and learns cool shit. And of course, I can't not mention, if you haven't seen for some reason, I'm sure everyone has, but those videos of him doing the training and he's going around the shooting range, awesome shit. <laughs> Just awesome shit. It shows you how, how realistic he can be. Um, and also another thing I wanna mention here that I didn't mention in my last review, remember that Ruby Rose, Common, Keanu Reeves, Freaking Halle Berry in the next one. You know, like, these are actors. Because I remember when La La Land came out, and I was an enormous fan of La La Land. It was like my favorite fucking movie of the last like five years. When I saw it, I just loved it. And I heard some people who were haters on it, and I was asking them why. And, and some had their reasons for the ending, which I kind of explained to them and whatever. That That's, that's nor here nor there for this uh, discussion. But the other thing was, from especially from older people, they were like, oh, they're dancing. I couldn't take it. It wasn't, you know, it didn't remind me of the singing in the rain and all these things. Like, it just seemed so stilted, this and that. And I'm like, yeah, but you have to remember, these are not, you know, this isn't Gregory Hines. This is, these are not professional dancers. These are not people who have trained their entire life to dance. And then they're acting in a movie just because they're dancers who can dance extremely well and then they you know learned a little acting too like these are actors who learn martial arts and they haven't been doing them their whole lives which to me just makes it extremely and more impressive that this is not it's like it's like speaking a second language you know it's not your native tongue that's not what you do you're not a fighter for them to be able to move as fluid as they do, for them to be able to uh, to be able to pull off these fight scenes and make them look at least almost completely realistic is more impressive to me. The fact that they did this in you know a few months, six months, whatever, that uh, Ryan Gosling was able to learn all of his piano parts for everything you play, that that's his hands playing all that stuff in there because he learned how to do it and all those dance moves and, and Keanu Reeves and all these people, their fight moves, like. That to me is just incredible that people who didn't grow up with it have that muscle memory, that, that constant you know um, practice day in day out, day in day out for thou you know freaking thousands and thousands and thousands of days, years and years and years of just repetitive um, practice. It's just I don't know. It's, it's it's extremely impressive to me that they're able to do that. Um, and what have you done? Uh, finished it. The fight between him and Ruby Rose, and when he's like, you know, she's like, I'll see you. Yeah, yeah, he's like, sure. I don't know. Is she alive? Did she live? I don't know. I don't know. Um, Common and Ruby Rose do not come back for the next one. So I don't know if we're going to see them again or not. But uh, yeah. So the high table puts $14 million on his head. He becomes excommunicado from the Continental, and Winston gives him one hour. But he also gives him a marker, which of course plays into the next movie. And we see that literally anyone could be after him um, at any moment in this, in this uh, world that he's now put himself out in. 
And another thing I want to say about this movie is it's got fantastic music as well. So uh, I don't know if I've mentioned, uh, I don't know if that gets mentioned a lot, but I think the music in these in this franchise is badass. So yeah, um, I think I talked about most things I want to talk about. Now I got to go do a discussion for John Wick 3. Hell yeah, let's get to that. <laughs> 